I have Jimmy Wallace's photo book, which we'll uh, reference here. I have two of the little photo uh, booklets, souvenir booklets that were done, and uh, that you can look at those afterwards. So we'll have some show and tell items. As we all know, probably the most famous um, photographer of that time, there were two that were competing with each other, uh, mostly. The most famous one was Jimmy Wells, I think. Well, at least uh, he's actually, actually he's, he's probably more infamous, but uh, okay. he was very well known in Waco and, and very active. He used to work for the Tribune Herald. And this is probably when uh, David and I talked about something that with one picture would depict the total severity of the tornado in Waco and with the cars crushed down to a matter of a foot or two in height. These people were uh, coming to pick up their loved ones because it was almost five o'clock and the rain was very, very hard and it was black, blacker inside the cow. And they, they pull up, but they didn't want to run out into the rain. They were waiting for the rain to let up and they could see one another. And then when the tornado went straight down Franklin and Austin, actually it kind of went down the alley between them, the parapets, the fronts of those buildings blew over and mashed these cars to a couple of feet high. And of course, the people in the store saw their loved ones uh, killed and uh, uh, sort of an eerie thing that happened subsequently was that for several hours the horns on those cars just blew and so uh, your picture is taken from the corner of fifth street looking down franklin toward the river and everything virtually between fifth and fourth street on this side of franklin the the, the side to the left of the picture was destroyed and there, were, there was a pool hall back in the alley there were 17 uh, people killed in that building and uh, the most devastation we'll see in a minute was from the uh, R.T. Dennis Pageants would be your left so let's look on down the road uh, okay, what, one thing David. this is what I'm talking about this tight caption it's on the bottom of these postcards. And all the postcards we've seen have that. We have no idea who did it. We have no idea when they did it and for what reason. But hopefully some of you might tell. Well, this would be immediately to the left of the picture that you looked at. And you're looking at the side of a five-story building it was known as the Paget Building, and uh, the alley is coming diagonally in about the middle of the left-hand side. And the Paget Building and the building we're going to see in a minute, the RT Dennis Building, both uh, went to the ground. And uh, so let's go on to the next one, David. One of the things, uh, and this picture at the upper, up the picture there says Cotton Palace Pool, and that was known also as the Sun Pool. And uh, the, it was made, the pool uh, was not there when it was Cotton Palace. They made us a municipal pool there. They left the stage of the old Cotton Palace uh, there, made out of concrete reinforced and so forth. And uh, I think there were three or four boys that were in there, lifeguards. They ran into what they perceived was a safe spot. And uh, that's where uh, I think two of the boys, uh, Beatrice Boy, uh, what was the name of the other one? Uh, Billy Beatrice. Billy Beatrice, but the other one. Who's the other one? Who's the other one? 
Well, anyway, there were a couple of uh, theirs and my contemporaries in high school that were, were killed there. And, uh, uh, and the Cop Palace Park is now kind of where the uh, elementary school is out there in the old Cotton Palace area. Okay, uh, the picture there again on Franklin is kind of looking, and you notice that these both have cut by Jimmy Willis. Now that's, a, that, you have to kind of, as, as David and I looked at these, how do you get a perspective or a view of that picture? If you went down to uh, uh, Fifth and Franklin now, and went into the Waco ISD administration building, that's where that picture was taken from. To the left corner is the base of the Amical building, and the right corner is Paget's, and where most of the people are gathered in there is the R.T. Dennis building. And bear in mind, this picture that Jimmy took uh, was taken at least the next day or the day after because uh, there a lot of the floors and, and debris was already, but you see all the people huddled over there in front of the Amical building and at the back of the Paget building, which was Dr. Johnson's office. That's where uh, you can't see the pool hall, but those buildings diagonally across there are the alley, and it would be to the right of that. Okay. And one of the things we noticed in looking at these postcards, uh, several photographers took almost the same shot. So they would have had to have either been with each other or they all saw what the best direction was to take the shot they needed to take. And many of these, I think, were credited to the proper photographer. I mean, obviously, this is Jimmy Willis. But there are other shots like this that he might have taken that he didn't get credit for. And that still remains a mystery from some of that. Another one. Okay. This, this uh, is the R.T. Dennis Furniture Company right here. And originally, it had one, two, three floors. And the cupola of the Patchett building behind it. Uh, Soon after the Amical building was completed in 1911, they added these two floors to the top of it. You're going to see how that building looks in a short while, but this picture was taken prior to the tornado. Now, I think this picture, which you can tell whether these pictures were taken the night of or the day after, so you can see all of this laying over the whole five-story building, the walls went out and the floors went down like a deck of cards. And so there's one, two, three, four, five floors laying over. In the back of the building, the R.T. Dennis building was a, a basement. And a lot of people went into that basement. Dennis had the largest number of fatalities of anywhere. And a lot of them were found that were not bunged up, they just drowned on the uh, water filled up there. The rain was horrendous uh, for uh, that night and then and for several days. Now, this, these are these floors, they're the massive floors. See the policeman standing right there. and. Uh, you'll see several, several shots. But you bear in mind that uh, there were a lot of people in that building and a lot of fatalities. Okay. This, this represents the first of the cards here that is not attributed to anyone. But you'll notice a number over here. These numbers go to in the low 60s. So somewhere there's a series of cards, and we only have a few of them. Uh, where are the missing ones? What what were they numbered for? Some are numbered and some aren't numbered. The mystery continues here. And you can see the Apple building base of it there, and uh, it swayed, they say, around 12 feet right to left. Doors open on the desk, and chairs rolled across the floor. 
and uh, yet it stands. Is it uh, night? Right now. Is it night? What? In that in that photograph was it taken at night? Mary, uh, let's take it back. Yes, it was, and that's a good point. Right. The the tornado stopped the clock on that building there, First National Bank, at about 4:20 something, and. Uh, the uh, you know it, it was raining hard, dark and dark. But TSDC was then at James Conley Air Force Base, and they and Texas Power and Light brought in portable lights and generators. And so you see these people are illuminated, whole site is illuminated, like a football field uh, with artificial light because there was no power. Where, where were those postcards sold? all over and and when david says uh we don't know uh, i knew jimmy willis pretty well i worked at Padges. he was a good customer and a great character but he worked for the associated press he he was a portrait photographer a wedding photographer so he was very active in any sort of uh, emergency and so these would have been sold a lot of them were sold at drugstores well, and, and some of them, I have, I have some Camp MacArthur uh, postcards that are tied together, like an accordion. That's right, that's right. And then, then David had a, a book of, uh, that are just like a little booklet. Mm -hmm. So they were put together. And that's why they were numbered out of magic. I would assume, I don't, we, I don't know that there's any sacred magic <laughs> in this being the 58th picture taken. I don't believe that at all. Yeah. No. Okay. And we also don't know how long after the tornado these were produced. Right. And somebody got them together together, had the typed caption put on the negative and shot them, I guess, or put it on the positive and then reshot the picture. So there was some work involved in producing these postcards. Wow. Now, Bridge Street, uh, this picture, is it, it even tells you where it was taken from the top of City Hall, which City Hall stayed there because it was built in 1936 and was a more modern construction. The windows kind of went south, but it stayed. And you can see the suspension bridge, and this bridge here was the inner urban bridge, which was a, a train that ran between Waco and Dallas. And you can see uh, this destruction here and, and some of this. This picture was uh, undoubtedly taken several uh, days or, or a good bit later because you see things are already excavated and hauled off. Again, not attributed to anyone. Uh, this Christmas Cafe was uh, very, very well known, and it was across the street from the Amical building where there were a lot of people working. And they would come down. RT Dennis is right over here. This is the Joy Theater, and you can see Hollywood trailers. But this is where my friend uh, Paul Sermis, he and I were in high school together, and just about as friends. We left and went, I went to Padgett's at night. He went to work in his dad and uncle's cafe. And he put on his apron and was standing right about along in here on this wall. And they had a big horseshoe counter. And his, his dad and his uncle were out there. And the walls went out and the floor came down. And he saw his dad and his uncle killed. And now you can see this picture. And this one, and you can tell two things about it. One, this was taken at night. You see how the, the lighting is, and it's full of brick, and they're in there trying to get people out. And you can see this one is in the daytime, probably several days afterwards. Now, the second, probably most famous photographer in Waco is Wendy Drum. These are three that are attributed to him, the only three we have that are attributed to him, uh, which I don't know what that means, but anyway. 
Oh, it means he was older and not as active. That's right. one thing. And we do want to ask about that one. Yeah, okay. this, this picture here simply, and, you know, just says typical uh, tornado. We can't really, uh, other than it says uh, Jimmy Willis photo. No, uh, I'm wrong. A Wendy Drone photo. It, it doesn't tell us even if that was in Waco. Uh, we, we don't know. We assume, but we're not able to identify that uh, four or five story building. The bottom picture here is looking from about right in front of the R.T. Dennis building down. That's the Roosevelt Hotel on the other end, and it stood. But Hollywood Taylors, this is the Joy Theater right here, and the uh, 53 or 54 Chevrolet uh, is parked there forever. And, uh, but this, you can see this five-story building here. What does it say at the bottom? Two. It says two five-story buildings went down here. Okay, well those two five-story buildings were Padgett's and R.T. Dennis. Yeah, right up there. Very, it's kind of washed out. I tried to darken it a little bit. That's the that work. Okay. So he was standing on Franklin when he took that photograph. Yeah, and he did a lot of it. The first one we saw was uh, Wendy standing, uh, not Wendy, Jimmy, standing in the street on Franklin and Fifth. But this picture here, you can see he's standing in, in Franklin Avenue. That's Padgett's right there. And behind it, in another pile of rubble, was R.T. Dennis. Okay. And the, uh, this picture here, there's a almost a duplicate of this in Life magazine, which is attributed to the life photographer, who was probably standing about the same almost the same place and yeah. taking the same same sort of view. Okay, this. Uh, but the only, these are the only two postcards we can find that were taken by and are attributed to Bob Ponder. And Bob ran a photo studio on Austin Avenue, and did you know Bob? Yes, uh, Bob wasn't, you know, the, the most active name for Jimmy Willis and Wendy, but there were a lot of other very good photographers in town. The thing that impresses me about this one here is that's those five floors laying over, and these are layers, and to me this is the epitome of the rescue expert exercise these people and literally they were risking their lives uh, as this was very unstable uh, and now this picture here if you want to see this building today just go down uh, fifth street park or stop right there this light is on the corner where the Alpha building is and that's right across the street and it's still standing and the Dennis building, that's what's lying down against it right there. It covered the entire uh, Fifth Street uh, at that point. And you can't see it here very well, but this says Dennis building. It's off the fifth floor. This is the top of the fifth floor. It says Dennis building right there. Another photographer, these are the, again, the only two postcards we can find by Sergeant Bill Cale. And he was? He was a U.S. Air Force uh, sergeant who was stationed at James County Air Force Base. And so, and, and he, when he retired, uh, he continued, uh, Bill Cable did, to do uh, photography first for the rest of his life. And uh, this, of course, depicts the, uh, you know, someone being rescued, carried out, whether they were alive or not, we don't know, but uh, he was undoubtedly, there were several hundred uh, men from uh, Tommy Air Force Base and all of their heavy equipment, uh, bulldozers, cranes and all. Uh, later, not much later, uh, Fort Hood sent folks up here. Okay. Now, what do you 
you see here, there's the Joy Theater. Uh, the cafe would be over in here. But this is looking at the back side of all those floors. That's that same building on the corner. And they're trying to uh, see if there's anybody still alive in there. And the last person that they found alive uh, about a day and a half later was the elevator operator. Uh, her name was Lily, Lily Mac Mankin, Mrs. Mankin. She was trapped. They could talk to her. She could talk to them. She said, I didn't sound like a woman after a while. My voice became so hoarse. But they brought her out alive, and, uh, and she did survive with no major. Uh, What's the building with the fire escapes in the background? Uh, fire escape, that's... Wait for I see now. Okay. And over here, you'd have to look hard to find that. That building was gone, but it had the, it, the basement of it. The first floor was first several seconds of So that's the corner of fourth, uh, fifth, fifth, and uh, Franklin right there. And so everything here, R.T. Dennis and Patches, that whole bit was gone. Okay, pay particular attention to this truck and this bulldozer. They're going to show up again. This is what David's talking about, different perspectives. This one's a little harder and it has a mystery in it. Maybe you can help us solve. Uh, this is a railroad track. It's the Cotton Belt Railroad Track. And that's the Cotton Belt Depot. And it had a little uh, cupola and everything on it, and uh, you can see it was just virtually blown away. In front of the Amoco building is this smokestack, but for what purpose and where it was and all, we don't know. Does anybody have any idea about that? I think David Lance was in this old car right over here. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This one is uh, one that I've only been with this thing for 60 years, but I, I failed to realize we think that the tornado first really showed up about where Baylor City uh, is now, not the new one. And uh, but where what is now? Baylor Stadium. The, oh. and, and Bell Hill, Baylor Stadium was was just constructed then. I heard that started in Lorena. They saw it, first saw it in Lorena. That's another interesting thing is that uh, until, uh, I guess, June the 2nd, uh, 2013, unless one of you raises your hand, uh, no one yet has claimed to have seen a funnel cloud. I saw green. You saw big green ridges, uh, we all did. I was, then, in, I was in Chilton, Texas, which is about 20 miles away, yeah. looking at towards You the had the right kind of view. About I was looking towards the west. <laughs> and it was just I had no idea what it was. And I was at Waco High, and I saw green and gray and so red, white, and blue. But uh, uh, the, the, the key thing, we just, last Friday night was Oklahoma Day again. And these things are, but. The tornado, we're sitting in a, a building that had a second floor, but the second floor went away. And right across the street from us was, was a, another building where they first bought a lot of pepper. The two big grain silos over there, it went right beside them, and on the corner of this block right here was the First Methodist Church, and the steeple laid over it, it was severely damaged. This church, the Emmanuel Church, is up on 18th Street. And uh, it didn't, you know, that's probably about the first place the Sun Pool and Katie Park were more this way. As you can see, it, it uh, made that church uh, uninhabitable. And we don't know who uh, to shot it. But you can hear with your own ears right now.
the Canadian Railroad is still coming back. Right? Yeah, there they go. Okay. Now, they're going
Nixon's trip to China and John Kennedy's uh, speech in Berlin, he photographed all those things. He has thousands of photographs online in the timeline archives. But in that same archive, there are 26 photos of the Waco tornado. Uh, many of them, most folks haven't seen either. Uh, the ones, they didn't use them all in Life magazine. They only used uh, about half of them or less. But these are probably two of the most famous ones, or not famous, but the most dramatic that he did take. The interesting thing, interesting thing about this, Mr. Donis, is that, uh, you know, this ran in the, in the May 25th, of course, the 13th to the 25th. This picture clearly was taken the night of May the 11th, where they lighted it and they're heading into trying to rescue the people. These are the, this is the roof of the RT Nance building and four more floors below it. This is Fifth Street. And so for him to have taken that, which is possible, but not necessarily, he could have purchased this picture and put his bylaw on. It doesn't, doesn't really matter, except that uh, I'm skeptical. Right here? That. That's an insurance company. That's badges behind it where the guy's got the board he's sticking up. This is RT Dennis. This is Fifth Street. And right about where that is black in there is where this building yeah, is no longer the first federal. Uh, it's on the other side of Franklin. This is the other end on 4th Street corner. That's the Praetorian building. Now, that building didn't go down in the tornado, but like a lot of buildings uh, that were in the vicinity, it, it ended up going down, not, you know, being knocked down, but by, by a decision that, that these buildings were not. Right in here, uh, David Lentz is pretty modest about it, but this is this is Fifth Street running this way. Remember all these buildings and the mash cars are on this side. Right in here was J.S. Barnett, Crane Company, and Barnett's hub is right about in here. David uh, can tell you more about that sometime. Uh, just kidding. The, uh, the issue of Life Magazine is very interesting. Uh, the Waco Library main branch has a copy, a own copy, and I'm very sure the Baylor Library has one also that you can go and look at. Okay, there's another collection, and this is at the Austin History Center in Austin. It's also available on the Portal to Texas History, which is a website that comes out of the University of North Texas. And the Neil Douglas Photography Collection, again, consists of hundreds and hundreds of photographs. He worked with the Austin American Statesman uh, for many years, so over 20 years. And he happened to, he, did, he came to Waco to photograph the, the tornado damage. Uh, the collection that's online, there are seven photographs done by him, uh, of which this is just the one I chose. And that, that picture is rather unique in, in most of the tornado pictures that go around Waco. Uh, again, here is, you can see this is later. It's probably not just the next day, but could have been a day or so later. This is the back of Padgett's where Johnson, the Dr. Johnson and his, uh, Mr. Lucene and the nurse were, and the nurse was killed. But if you're standing where he was, look at the camera angle. He's down low, looking up. And this is what's left of Padgett's. There's the Roosevelt Hotel, which is diagonally across from this corner. Roosevelt is the corner of fourth and Austin Avenue, and it, it's looking virtually unscathed because it, it like its friend, the Amical Building, were a more modern construction, and they survived, as did City Hall. Not much else. Okay.
Okay, one of the, um, another photograph, this is the one that I wanted to call your attention to of the truck and the bulldozer, because they're both in that picture. The bulldozer's uh, hard to see, but here's the top of it, and here's the, the tread, the blade right here, and the treads are back here. Very similar to that other picture. But this photograph came out in November of 1953 with a tagline on the back that said um, that this the top news story of the year was worldwide weather. And they led with this picture as part of it. Um, the, the interesting thing, the picture you saw before was taken over here in this corner looking back this way. This picture was taken from the Amical building, looking right down at Dennis and Padgett's, just straight on. Some other pictures, and there's the Joy Theater right there. Will that go away? Just try clicking. And uh, just click the mouse and see what goes. Nope. Don't. Uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. So I thought, I thought it was interesting that UPI used this for their story of the, the year. The story of the year was the worldwide weather. And if you remember 1953, there were lots of things happening all around the world weather-wise. There was a tornado in San Angelo yeah. a few hours earlier on May there were droughts and floods and all sorts of things that uh, they declared as the top stories of the year. This is the only photo I've found of that. Uh, I bought this one when it became available. It was on eBay, so I snatched it up. Another thing that uh, happened, Jimmy Willis, being the enterprising person that he is, uh, produced a booklet of photographs that he took and sold them for $2, you can see here. Uh, after it's over, you can come take a look at it if you want to. Uh, how many of you have one of these? Anybody? They're, they're hard to come by these days, but uh, I'm sure he produced quite a few of them. And, uh, that'll be available to look at. All right, another publication that came out was the Texas National Guard. All of the work they did here, they had a photographer taking pictures of uh, their activities. And that, uh, that publication has eight pictures of the tornado, mostly of, of the guardsmen doing their duty. But it has some other different angles and different views. The General Adjustment Bureau, I'm not sure if it's what it turned into or may still be. May still be, I'm not sure. I did not look that up. They put out a uh, booklet about the tornado. They have a, a double page map showing where it went. And it has 14 images in it of the tornado, many of them uh, not seen, not published anywhere else. There artist rendition <laughs> is interesting but not very appropriate to what we've noticed thus far. Now, likewise. This is yeah likewise. This is the one that's really a keeper in my opinion. I've been trying to get all of these and I don't have them. Well I have the general just in the bureau but I don't have this one. Southwestern Bell Telephone in repairing the lines and so forth all through town. Uh, took a lot of shots of their folks doing repair work. But this book has 43 pictures in it of the Waco tornado, many, many of which are never are not anywhere else. So this one's one worth looking at also. Uh, all of these publications are at the Waco Library, the main Waco Montgomery County Library downtown. You can't check them out, they're in the Schumacher room. A couple of other things. The uh, the NOAA Fort Worth website for NOAA. And I don't think this show up. Here. 
I tried to darken it. Anyway, you can get on your uh, on your search engine and look for NOAA Fort Worth weather. Uh, that site has um, six photographs, tornado photographs, all attributed to the Waco Tribune Herald. So those should be uh, images that were taken by the Trib folks and are in their archives. I haven't been able to locate those yet. And Ann Rosnowski and I are still looking. And here's the um, Neil Douglas site. <coughs> On your search engine, you can go to Austin History Center and look up Neil Douglas, D-O-U-G-L-A-S-S, -S -S, or to the North Texas Portal to Texas History, and uh, they have a link to that also. And then here's the Life Magazine site. Again, you can go to Time Life Archives and Waco Tornado in your search engine under Time Life, and it has all 26 of the photographs that are there. And we can post all of those links on the museum's website okay. and Facebook page and tweet them so that everybody can have you, access. Y'all hear that? Okay. Because the, the museum, it, it, I have had to ask myself, why the museum? I mean, you know, where did they appoint themselves, the expert of the uh, tornado and the keeper of the tornado? stuff and all and uh, I guess one thing could be that it's one of the few surviving buildings that you know it was uh, heavily damaged but it was it was restored George you go ahead and turn the lights on please uh, and so where we're sitting uh, would not have been a good place to be in this building but Joy and I were doing an oral history before we started working on this building. Uh, and the gentleman that was the manager of the company that was here when the tornado hit, his office was on the corner up here. The canopies were doing this to the employees. He told us we were all instructed to go right over here into the vault, and there was a large vault. And had they not several of those people, a number of them would have been killed. This was called the, the Rotan Mosley building. Uh, now, Miss Summersmith, uh, Miss Joy, the boss, uh, she set up these with uh, Jack McKinney, these lectures slash seminars. Uh, I kind of would like to think that they're more of not so much a lecture means you know talking to you and to me I would like to have more interactivity from you folks here almost everyone that was here back at that time has certain memories where they were or they had a friend that was involved and it, it's kind of strange to be last Friday night watching uh, the news for probably several hours uh, and the kind of coverage from storm chasers to satellites to you know all over and, and you wonder uh, this they didn't rank tornadoes back in 1953 but the meteorologists and all said it's it's not really any, any question about the strength of this tornado it was uh, Waco was was hit right in the middle of downtown at uh, you know just before five o'clock and the tornado warning sirens hadn't gone off because there were no tornado warnings and the television stations hadn't covered it because there were no television stations and there were had just recently gotten the second of two radio stations. In the news, the afternoon newspaper said, uh, mainly from the Fort Worth Weather Center, and radar was a very, there was radar in a and and in Fort Worth. But things were just not as well connected. The cell phones didn't work worth the hoot back then. <laughs> <laughs> and so, to me, it's we're very providentially blessed that more people were 
were not killed. The doctors, and there's a couple of doctors in the room here, they treated people, they treat Austin and Hillcrest and problems. And it's again, I think the second day of June, 2013, and no charges. Back when I was working in Dr. Pepper Museum, we were going to have an exhibit like Joy put up a beautiful exhibit, and I had a lot of conversations with Juanita Willis. Right, Jimmy and Willis was, a, and she was a fine photographer, and she told me that the day of the tornado, she had scheduled a portrait sitting, and her mother, who was sitting at the desk, ran into the room, and she said, Mother Newton never, ever bothered me when I was doing a portrait sitting. And she said, Juanita, Willie just, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy just called, and there's been a tornado, and it's wiped away downtown, and he said, get your camera and all of our film and bring it with you. And she told me that many of those photographs were made by Juanita Willis. And yeah, Juanita was a premier particular portrait, but she, she was a great photographer. Both of them worked at the Tribune Herald, met there, and married. And then they were studioed by that time at 26th and Washington. But uh, the, uh, I don't know how many times I've heard people who have reported to family members by phone or whatever way, and most phones were wiped out down here for a while, to say those words, Waco, downtown Waco was blown away. And, and, and so, yes ma'am. Uh, I'd like to share something. Uh, at that time, I was six years old and in the first grade, and I was attending St. Mary's Elementary School. And my only recollection of the tornado uh, while I was at school in my first grade classroom